but it starts by giving up an active deity. Then it gives up the hope that there's any life after death. When you give those two up, the rest of it follows fairly easily. You give up the hope that there's a, an imminent morality. And finally, there's no human free will. If you believe in evolution, you can't hope for there being any free will. There's no hope whatsoever of there being any deep meaning in human life. We live, we die, and we're gone. We're absolutely gone when we die. Dr. Provine is no stranger to the prospect of death. Nearly a decade ago, he was diagnosed with a large brain tumor. Let's suppose my tumor comes back, as it almost certainly will. Well, I'm not going to sit around like my older brother did last year, and he was dying of ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. He wanted desperately to die, but we couldn't help him die. I don't want to die like that. I'm going to shoot myself in the head long before then. I'm going to do something different. I hope these are empty words for my friend, Dr. Provine, because shortly after this interview was recorded, he learned his brain tumor had returned. How dare you? He just said he doesn't want to die in slow misery the way his brother did. He wants to live life and die quick and painless. How dare you say you'd wish he'd choose to die slow? It's his life. It's his choice. If he chooses not to suffer from his illness, so be it. I would want the same freedom were I in his position. Dr. Provine's deconversion story was typical amongst the Darwinists we interviewed. Biologist P.Z. Myers, who runs the pro-Darwin anti-religion blog Ferengula, says science eroded his faith as well. I, I never hated religion. I found religion quite comfortable and I liked the people in it. Uh, what led to the atheism was learning more about science, learning more about the natural world and seeing these horrible conflicts with religion. And it was then when I discovered evolution, when I discovered Darwinism, that I realized there's this magnificently elegant, stunningly elegant explanation, um, which I didn't quite understand to begin with. When I did understand it, then that finally killed off my remaining religious faith. After hearing these stories, I was not surprised to discover that most evolutionary biologists share Professor Dawkins' views. It appears Darwinism does lead to atheism, despite what Eugenie Scott would have us believe. Correlation does not imply causation. I contend to you that those who lack complete faith in religion are more prone to understanding evolution, not the other way around. It's possible that the I-want-to-learn disposition of many atheists is what's responsible for their overwhelming presence in the sciences. There is a connection between a society that has at least a minimal commitment to certain kinds of um, transcendental values and what human beings permit themselves to do one to the other. That got me thinking, what other societies have used Darwinism to trump all other authorities, including religion? As a Jew, my mind leapt to one regime in particular. Really, Mr. Stein? That's interesting. As a Jew, one of a race of God's chosen people, you immediately thought of a race that thinks themselves superior? The connection between Hitler and Darwin is, of course, historically a difficult connection because they were separated by a good many years. One was English, one was German. Nonetheless, if you open Mein Kampf and read it, especially if you can read it in German, the correspondence between Darwinian ideas and Nazi ideas just leaps from the page. No, Mr. Shark Eyes. According to evolution, a species is more likely to survive if it preserves its biodiversity. Hitler wanted to eliminate diversity within our species on the basis of superficial appearance. Hitler's motives were that of a vain sociopath, not an evolutionary scientist. So what is this place? During the Second World War, 15,000 people were killed here. Why were they killed? They were killed because they were people with uh, handicaps. Why kill them? What's the point of killing them? People who were not able to work, people who were not able to live by themselves, that they were useless eaters. Alles Lebensschwache geht in der Natur unfehlbar zugrunde. Wir Menschen haben gegen dieses Gesetz der natürlichen Auslese in den letzten Jahrzehnten furchtbar gesündigt. Wir haben unwertes Leben nicht nur erhalten, 
Wir haben ihm auch Vermehrung gewährt. Die Nachkommen dieser Kranken sahen so aus, die tiefer stehen als jedes Tier. So this was a Darwinian concept. Yes. What she's speaking of isn't evolution. It's fascist eugenics. This is not Darwinian. The theory of evolution says a species does better when it preserves biodiversity. Thus, it would be advantageous in the long run not to kill those with physical or mental handicaps. In a previous video of mine, I explained why this line of thinking was wrong. You can't just say Hitler liked Darwin and call it good. He was also a sociopath. That might have had something to do with it. The World Health Organization defines dissocial personality disorder to be number one, callous unconcern for the feelings of others and lack of capacity for empathy. Two, gross and persistent attitude of irresponsibility and disregard for social norms, rules, and obligations. Number three, incapacity to maintain enduring relationships. Number four, very low tolerance to frustration and a low threshold for discharge of aggression, including violence. Number five, incapacity to experience guilt and to profit from experience, particularly punishment. Six, marked proneness to blame others or to offer plausible rationalizations for the behavior bringing the subject into conflict. Number seven, persistent irritability. I wanted to explore this connection further, so I met with the author of From Darwin to Hitler, Dr. Richard Weikart. Hitler and many of the physicians that carried out this program were very fanatical Darwinists. His leading academics, were there any of them who were Americans? There were plenty of Americans uh, who were saying similar kinds of things. Not only were Americans saying such things, they were pioneers in this fledgling science known as eugenics. Wow. Mr. Stein was even aware that this is not evolution, but eugenics. Yeah, eugenics has ethical issues not present in normal evolution. Eugenics isn't just history. The spirit of the movement lives on today. Uh, Margaret Sanger was the head of Planned Parenthood. Uh, she was a very uh, fanatical in her promotion of eugenics. In fact, uh, Planned Parenthood was all about birth control for the uh, impoverished and lower classes to try to help improve the species. And now, abortion has more to do with personal freedom and lack of responsibility. When it was a fully functioning concentration camp, and uh, what was the purpose of it? I mean, part of it was to repress political enemies. What was, the, what was the rest of the purpose? Well, beyond the repression of the political enemies, which was its purpose from the, at the very beginning, then later on it transformed into repressing uh, racial enemies. And sometimes those categories overlapped because sometimes they thought that these people were political enemies because they were inferior biologically. The war itself was part of the Darwinian struggle for existence for Hitler. The theory of evolution did not rationalize the actions of Hitler because his actions were vain and self-destructive in light of evolution. You're thinking of eugenics, which is a whole new ball game. There's a good German expression, so fängt das immer ein. I mean, it always begins in the same way. Um, something to remember in the context of United States discussions of euthanasia and abortion. Whoop, stop right there. The arguments for euthanasia and abortion, particularly now that eugenics has moved off the map, has nothing to do with evolution. Both of the supporting arguments involve control over one's own life and body. It always begins in the same way. There seems to be a, an excellent argument for getting rid of useless people by killing them. Or at least it seems excellent to the people advancing the argument. It's a love affair with death and you know, the euthanasia and this movement going on, which I find appalling. And the idea is that, you know, immediately rid our society of anybody who might be a drain um, and think of people in economic terms. And I think that's where some of the Darwin fits in, actually. It's just a devaluing of human life.